no. <laughs> that was sick. All sand in the sand. <laughs> Hey guys, it's your friendly desert dwelling Sarah here times dose. <laughs> Today we're gonna be doing an off-road review of this bad chicken. 2018 Jeep Rubicon Unlimited. It's a Jeep, brah. <laughs> We're getting shot at out here in the sticks. Purpose of today's review is we're gonna take one of the best off-road vehicles that you can buy new on the market today. Take two girls with limited experience in off-roading and zero experience in rock crawling <laughs> and just see how capable this vehicle is because there's tons of reviews out there on the internet on Jeeps with experts that are skilled in off-roading. And what we wanna show you is what this thing is capable of with two people that don't know what the hell they're doing. Because <laughs> let's face it, how many of you out there know someone that has an off-roading rig that is nothing but a bro-dozer that cruises mall parking lots? <laughs> let's go do stuff. <laughs> So we are at the famous Reddington Pass near Tucson, Arizona today, which neither of us have been to, and we live here in Tucson. So we're gonna take this Rubicon up through Reddington Pass and just see what kind of stuff we can get ourselves into. enough reviews online of the JL Generation Jeep Rubicon already. We're not gonna make this like your typical read off the brochure style car review because that's not what we're about. So real quick, we're gonna name off one thing that we like, we don't like, and something that we're just kinda like, huh? <laughs> so Sarah, go. Like about this vehicle is the rugged interior. I feel like you can trash this thing and it'll still be good. You just hose it off and good to go. Yeah. What I don't like about this is the removable hard top when you take it off. If you're going any more than like 25 miles an hour, you get gusts of wind in here. And then what I found weird about this is that your window up and down button is- Window switch. <laughs> up and down buttons <laughs> is uh, in the center. And I feel like it's just awkward to reach. If it was over here, it'd feel more comfortable. I found it too, like a couple times I've been trying to reach the window switches I'm like where are the switches and I forget they're down here so maybe it's just like a muscle memory thing that you learn that the switches are over here I get why you did it is because you can remove the doors although when you remove the doors you don't need to put down and down the window right <laughs> <laughs> what I love the most about this Wrangler is the fact that you can still get it with a six-speed manual however what I don't like about it is the fact that if you get the two-liter turbo with the mild e-torque hybrid system you can't get the manual transmission you only get the eight-speed auto which is good but I would like to see the manual transmission offered on the four-cylinder turbo version because that's the only version I would get if I was gonna buy one of these is the four-cylinder turbo. The thing that I found really weird is the fact that it's got little Jeep logos and all the buttons right here in the dash except for the tract control button. It still shows a car on there. So they went through all the effort of putting little Jeeps on like the recirc button and the hill descent control but they don't have one for tract control. Bye Jeep. I'm sorry, I'm a wimp when it comes to heights. I don't like being this close to the edge in this Jeep at all. Me either. I definitely think they should put some guardrails around here. What? Some of us are afraid of heights. <laughs> some of us are afraid of commitment. Spiders. And are we we're keeping this going? <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that I learned from watching some off-road reviews is always wear your seatbelt when you're off-roading like this because more fatalities happen from getting ejected from the vehicle when it rolls or people trying to stick their hands out to try to like somehow stop the vehicle from rolling. That's how you lose limbs. So as terrifying as that is, it's better to just hold on and brace inside the vehicle and just hope for the best.
came to an area that looks a little bit more technical. I haven't aired down the tires yet. I haven't really needed to quite yet. So I'm trying to like do everything I can without having to use anything to help me. And I don't think I'm gonna need a spotter, but it is a little bit more technical. So here goes nothing. crazy if this was my vehicle I would attempt it but I don't think I'm gonna do that in someone else's $50,000 Jeep <laughs> I wonder if I can do this in two-wheel drive I well, saw it from back there really <laughs> yeah all right we're gonna go full send in two-wheel drive we're only about a uh, between a 7 to 10 roll we're not, we're not going sideways that much Send, <laughs> send, engage. <laughs> that was, that was shockingly easy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're going down. Oh no. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't know you were taking us down this. I did not know we were gonna go down this. Okay. Oh geez. Oh geez. Oh. We're at like a 20 degree pitch right now. 20 degree pitch and 8 degree roll. Mm -hmm. The roll's about the same as the up, but the pitch is a significant difference. Yeah. I guess you really would never need four wheel drive for going down. <laughs> it was just that initial crest was really scary. I mean, on camera it probably doesn't show it, but like we're looking down at the hood is like way <laughs> down below us. Oh my god, that was crazy. Whew. People are gonna be like, oh, that's nothing. I, I know. This. Like, this is our first time going out in the wild with a Jeep. So. I think everybody watching this right now, even though you're probably like, yeah, that's nothing, remember the first time you ever went rock crawling and how you felt. And that's how we feel right now. Like, this, I can see why so many people love off roading and rock crawling and jeeping because <laughs> this is such a rush. The one thing I'm really surprised with this being the Rubicon is the carpeted floor. Yeah, it's super rugged everywhere else and a carpeted floor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess if you're doing rock crawling, you're not introducing a lot of mud into the vehicle. But I think with this, I wouldn't mind if it didn't have carpet. I'd be okay with it. it makes sense to me. Just rip it all out. <laughs> this thing on the highway, it's been comfortable, like really comfortable just daily driving it type stuff. And to think that it can do this type of stuff with ease is kind of a mind blowing thing. test the mud capabilities in this tiny little mud pit. It's only mud we've really seen since we've been out here because we're in the desert. But um, yeah, we'll do that in two-wheel drive too and just see how this thing does in mud. <laughs> that was sick. That was more than I thought it was going to be. This is like a difficult vehicle to like accept the price of it being over $50,000 because it's like dude that's so much money but if you think about trying to take any other vehicle and modifying it to be really capable off-road and have this much tech features and get this kind of gas mileage and all that stuff and then have a warranty on top of it then it starts to make sense why it's 50 grand so I get it. I just feel like if I was going to get one of these and my whole purpose was to go off-road I would just get the bare bones. I don't know though, would you rather have the V6 just so you can have the six speed manual or would you rather have this mild hybrid turbo four cylinder? That's a hard decision because I like the engine in this one so much better. I'd probably go with this one and then just 
try to manual swap it. I wonder if it's possible. I mean, the engine that is in this is similar to the two liter turbo that's found in the Alfa Romeo Stelvio in the Julia. I'm just amazed that we have not used the diff lockers. We have not used four wheel drive. <laughs> I haven't even aired down the tires. It's doing all this in two wheel drive. I haven't needed any of that crazy stuff. That just shows this thing is probably insanely capable. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's doing everything just like in too high. Quick sand test. This is some deep sand right here. It's even hard to walk in. It's like a beach. So I'm gonna stop in two wheel drive and see how this thing does in deep sand. Redemption. <laughs> Yeah, we're stuck and we're even in four low. How did it get stuck? It's not that crazy. <laughs> Sarah's run. <laughs> I wish you guys could see this right now. It's hilarious. <laughs> she doesn't sport much. It's so windy. <laughs> it is really windy outside. Brace myself. I'm out of breath because I had to run. Dead stop in the sand. <laughs> that was awesome. I mean, it gets a little nerve wracking at first because we got the Ranger stuck. But the Ranger, I, I think it was the tires in the Ranger. It really was. Here it goes, just full sand in the sand. Seriously, dude? It literally just, that's crazy. show the difference of tires in sand because I'm still on two-wheel drive not using anything and uh, I think this sand is worse than we were at last time with the Ranger. I think so too. safe to say this thing is amazing in sand. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> that was so fun. Normally I end these videos outside the vehicle so you can see it one last time, but it is super windy out. It just got stormy out of nowhere and it's like 25 to 30 mile per hour winds outside. So we're gonna do our meatball score inside the Jeep. Now if you guys have no idea what the hell we're talking about food for with an off-road review, <laughs> The meatball score is something that she came up with since my car views. I do what's called the bean score to rate how much beans the car has for you to give it when you give it the beans. I chose meatballs because the crawl control on the Forerunner has meatballs. Tack tackling meatballs. <laughs> Heavy meatballs. <laughs> so now we have to give it a meatball score. <laughs> So the Jeep Rubicon, I'm going to give you do the three. Trace. Point five. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna get 3.5 because I, this is pretty much like the king when it comes to off-roading for something you can buy with a factory warranty, except for the fact there is a higher level than this, the Moab edition. A bomb. <laughs> Mother of all brodozers. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna give this thing 3.5 meatball rating because I could never imagine pushing it to its limits. Being a novice. And yeah. that's why I wanted to do this review to show it wasn't really that intimidating. It was fun. Never needed four wheel drive the entire time. We never pushed this thing to its limits. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I'll see you next week with another. Bye.